First John 5 verse number 8. First John 5 verse number 8. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence afresh. We ask that you be present to break yokes and break burdens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm reading 1st John 5 from verse number 8. If you can find that scripture to put on the screen, Victoria, I'd appreciate it. We're dealing with a very serious issue. Yes, sir. And um, hmm. this issue, if you don't understand it, you will trivialize it. First John 5 from verse 8. The Bible says there are three that bear witness the spirit the water and the blood and what it says next is very important these three agree as one <laughs> in verse 9 it says if we receive the witness of men then the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. Bless you, Keziah. Verse 10 says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given us of his son. Verse 11 says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. It is found in only one location. If you must overcome the witness of blood, you must find a way to relocate just like you can move from Lagos to Ibadan. You must relocate to a location that location is called in the Son of God. Verse 12 says, He who has the Son has life. When you have come into that location called the Son of God, how do we know that it's a location? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Jesus. The righteous run into that name and they are saved. So you can run into a location called the name of the Lord, the name Jesus, and you will be saved. So he who has the Son, who has run into the Son, has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Verse 13 says, I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. Question, what is eternal life? Is it something that can only be enjoyed when you get to the afterlife? Can a person enjoy eternal life here upon the earth? We don't have much time. 
Guys, there is something called the witness of blood. The Bible says there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the blood, the water. And what I find more disturbing is that it says these three agree as one. In other words, if the witness of blood is crying against you, the spirits will have to agree. It will agree because there is a legal basis. Anything that has to do with blood pertains to life because the Bible says the life of a thing is in the blood. If it has blood, it has life. And if life is attached to it, it is a serious issue of contention. Because the life of a man is not cheap. God would have died if all he had to save was 10 people upon the earth. That's how precious the life of a person is to God. And you know, scattered all of our scripture, we read about issues areas where the witness of blood is clearly seen but we take them for granted and we don't understand you see the bible is like an encoded book the spirit of god has to help you oh dear Various anointings are turning on as I speak. The anointing for power just turned on. The anointing for healing just turned on. So God really wants to break some things. You will read the book of Genesis and you begin to look at the life of a patriarch like Abraham. And we understand from studying his life that he married a woman called Sarah. And the Bible says she was a fair woman. She was beautiful. But when the Bible says she was very fair, it's not just that she was beautiful. There are certain characteristics that describe women like that. In Genesis 12, 11, he said to Sarah, as they traveled, I know that you are a fair woman. You are a fair woman to look upon. Therefore, let's concord this lie. And the both of them agreed. And we know how it ended. A few chapters later in Genesis 26. The Bible says in verse 6 that Isaac stayed in Gerah. He also loved fair women. And when the men of that place asked him about his wife. He said to them. She is my sister. The same lie his father told. The same situations that were orchestrated against his father somehow began to replay in his life. And so he said, she is my sister because he was afraid to say that she is his wife. And then Jacob also loved fair women. He loved fair women so much that it took seven more years of his life to get the one that he really wanted. And his soul delighted him. It's almost wasted his life. Maybe yours is not fair women. As I say, there are mostly women on this call anyways.
The witness of blood can be something else. It just shows us a pattern in three generations. And if we are saying that one generation is at least 50 years, then there is a pattern. So 150 years, a spirit orchestrated the events in this bloodline that made them repeat the same mistake over and over again. You see, I have a friend a very close friend his grandfather lived to be about 95 years old in nigeria the few years before this man died he spent time with his grandfather and the man already had dementia because of the old age but he was the, the favorite grandson or grandchild of this man he will spend time with him and he will call him by a pet name. But because of his state, the man could not remember much. But a day came and a time came when he was spending time with his grandfather. His father had dropped him. He had put the man to bed. And all of a sudden, the man turns to him with his eyes fixated at him and said listen to me my son and called him by that pet name he said you see in our family i've noticed a trend my father divorced his first wife it is his second wife that he stayed married to when he came to me the same thing happened situations happened that my first wife and I ended up in a divorce. And my second wife is who I spend time with. And then your father, my son, had the same exact problem. He divorced your mother when you were two years old. It is the second wife that he took that he stayed on, stayed with as his wife. I want you to break that pattern because it is not a good testimony about our family. 1 John 5, 11 says, This is the testimony, my God, that God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son. You see, my, my friend tried his best to break that pattern. He got married to this girl. I was the best man. The marriage lasted approximately six months. He tried his best. He tried to break it in the flesh, not knowing that the only way to break it is found in the Son of God. If you must change that testimony, you must change your location in the Spirit. not by power it's not by strength you don't break spiritual things by your own intelligence my friend ended up in the divorce as we speak he's just now gotten engaged again friends if you must break a cycle that has erupted in your family by virtue of blood you must understand the nature and characteristic of the blood that runs in your vein the blood in your vein may i tell you has a voice and the voice speaks louder than your human voice. The witness your blood has, it can cry out from any base 
afforded it as in the case of Abel when he's looking. Or when Cain slew him, rather. In Genesis 4 verse 10, the Bible says, The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Friends, the witness of blood can nail you to the cross of sin or iniquity or transgression. When you are nailed to the cross of sin, you will find that the sins of your father or the sins of your mother keep following you. For instance, your father could have been a chronic smoker. You may not have smoking as your vice, but you will find something else and you begin to follow the exact same pattern that your father had. This is when the witness of blood is crying out as far as sin goes. But then there is iniquity. Iniquity is defined as the act of using your will against God's will, which then binds the harmony your spirit has with heaven. Oh my. And then you have the witness, blood cries when there is transgression on the ground. A transgression is defined as willful trespass. You trespass against God's laws. God's laws are found in his word. Transgression is to choose to intentionally disobey by means of trespass and a trespass means you've crossed a line that you shouldn't have and for that reason you are due to face consequences it is the witness of blood that ensures those consequences begin to follow you a simple example of a transgression is when a person commits abortion The trespass you committed is, thou shalt not kill. That was in God's word. Do you know that a sin just like that can be the basis why a familiar spirit begins to trace your blood and stop you from succeeding in life? Because blood is a witness that blood can cry out from the ground. I want you to know that there are demons. These ones are called familial spirits. They are the ones ensured and assigned to trail the witness blood brings. And when a familiar spirit is assigned to your life, it has history that you don't have. It knows the sin or the iniquity or the transgression of your forefathers. It knows what your grandmother did at the exact age you've clocked this year. You don't have that information. I want you to picture a boxing ring. Many of us have watched boxing before. Think of a boxing ring. And in that ring, there is a referee checking to see who has done wrong. And when he sees someone that has caused a foul or something like that, what he will do is he will raise his flag. That is what familial spirits do. The witness of blood trails you like this referee in that boxing match until a curse can be attached. One that followed your father or your mother.
question. How do we then overcome the weakness of blood? Hmm. You see, by virtue of our nature, the limited information we have, the more you grow in Christ, the more you realize that your advantage is found expressly in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. It is only he that knows all things. Even if they gave you books about the life of your grandfather a hundred years ago, and they gave you another one for your father that contained everything he did each day of his life, That the volume is so thick and so big, it would take you years to read it. You still wouldn't have the time or the wisdom to unearth where a trespass that created a transgression was committed. You wouldn't know where an iniquity came from. The ones that you can easily identify in that kind of a book are the scenes of his life but you know what makes it more complicated and why you must expressly depend on the spirit but even if you had that information about your grandfather your great-grandfather and your father you've only solved 50 percent of your problem The Bible says in Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3, the Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. Listen to me. There are some blessings of God that cannot alight on you until you get thee out. This scripture gives us an inclination so that we know that there are sins, there are iniquities, and there are transgressions attached to your country. Maybe you are a Nigerian. What is the stigma about Nigerians being fraud stars all around the world? It is a sin attached to country. Hmm. Sometimes I watch people boast of how Nigerian men can get women anywhere around the world. That source of confidence. You don't even know it is a demon that has trailed the iniquity of your fathers. Tied to your country. There are stigmas that you must investigate. Even up to your continent level. Why is it that there are certain sicknesses unique to white men? And there are some unique to black people. Why is it that most African men at a particular age, when they begin to age, prostate issues begin to happen to them? This is the witness of blood by virtue of your country, your region, your geographic location.
And then there are the ones from your family, your extended family. You've noticed the pattern in an auntie, in two aunties, in three aunties, in four aunties. And you think you are different. Maybe you notice that those in your mother's line, her sisters, don't keep their husbands. I want you to know that a demon is attached. It's called a familial spirit. And the basis it uses to trail is blood. Because there are three that bear witness on earth. And blood is one of them. And blood has a voice. And if that blood runs in your own vein, you are not exempt unless you change your location. There's no exemption. You should know that. And then in your father's house, this is where you can identify the most patterns. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the help. There's too much to uncover. That's why I call it a cobweb. Layers. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10, That is the Holy Spirit that searches the deep things of God. The Spirit searches all things. He searches all things. Even the deep things of God. So the first thing you're going to begin to pray. Because we're dealing with these issues today. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to search we cannot deal with everything that pertains to everybody on this call today because it is the work of a researcher and a searcher proverbs 25 verse number two it is the glory of god to consider things but it is the glory of kings to search out a matter you must be that king in your family you will sit down and carry a lens and begin to zoom into the previous generations. But you need your partner, the Holy Spirit, to help you search. It is he that can search the deep things of God because God takes glory in concealing things. But kings find glory. There is a certain level of glory you will achieve when you uncover the truth your family oh god began to take me back in 2009 i was seeing events that happened in my family many many years before i was born so that when you pray you can know what you're asking for exemption for and then you can be relocated by the spirit So the first prayer point you're going to ask the holy spirit to reveal to go into you and take light like a torchlight in a dark room and begin to search out every sin every iniquity and every transgression that was in your father's house or your mother's house that has come together to become the blood running through your veins you're going to unmute and cry out to God and say, would you help me? Search out the deep things. 
search out the deep things let's begin to pray ask god search out the deep things search out the deep things of god the deep things in my family the deep things in my bloodline search it out everything every single thing now. search it out search it out search it out search it out oh god search it out oh god search it out oh god search out the deep things of god search out the deep things the deep things in my bloodline now the deep things in my bloodline the deep things in my bloodline God <laughs> Amen. Listen to me. Everybody on this call is smart. You have eyes to see. God gave you a brain to think. You can see those in the line of your parents. Are there any patterns you've identified in there? Just by virtue of your thinking. Have you been able to see anything that you question? That why is this like this in this family? If you must avoid the mistakes that line made, you will start by ruling out everything you see to the physical and visible eyes. Believe you me, there are more layers on the ground. You're just seeing an example, an idea. And one of the common things is that the mistakes people make, a simple mistake could be that at the age of 30, the women in your family line, they cheat on their husbands. They step out and they have an affair. And an issue comes out of that affair a physical human being that has now become the evidence of blood that demons are pointing at to trail you you are going to pray and your prayer point is if you can identify anyone that you can think of You're going to call that person by name. And you're going to ask that, Father, the mistake this person made or these people made, I declare an exemption from them. I'll tell you how you will pray in the next few prayer points. But first of all, identify the mistakes. Identify the mistakes in that line before you. And the line that you came in through, cousins, all of that. Let's begin to pray and ask God. That Father, every single identification I've made, I exempt myself by virtue of the blood. 
I exempt myself by virtue of God. Let's begin to pray. in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray Amen. revelations 12 verse 11 I'm talking about overcoming the weakness of blood In Revelation 12, 11, we are given an express solution. The Bible says, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. <laughs> Many of us only know the first part of that verse. Many of us don't understand the latter part of that verse. The Bible says they loved not their lives unto the... In other words, if it takes me going to get this issue resolved, it cannot stand. I will destroy it. I will break its neck. (coughs) They loved not their lives. We are given two express solutions. The first is that you can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. This is, as you know it, the blood of Jesus. If we are saying we need to overcome the weakness that your blood has tied you to, we must employ another witness. So if blood has a voice, we must apply the one that has the strongest voice in the spirit. That's why Jesus had to come and die because the blood of bulls and goats were not loud enough in the spirit. It's blood, oh, it's contained life, oh. But he had to come and become the ultimate sacrifice. God had to become flesh. Why? Because of the issue of blood. That's how powerful blood is. Because spirits weigh, they weigh their depths in blood. It's as simple as to idol worshippers. And one person worships a deity. And the other one worships another deity. And now the one that worshiped the first deity has slaughtered a chicken to afflict the other one. A chicken. And the other one took the blood of a goat and slaughtered it. The blood of a goat is heavier in scale, in the spirit, than the blood of a chicken. That's why you would see in the Old Testament when there will be specific animals God told them to use for specific scenes or for specific offerings. It's not a random pick. It is very intentional. That if you're looking for a heave offering or a sin offering or a wave offering, the blood of this animal should be sufficient to meet that demand. For God had to come and die once and for all by offering his own blood, the blood of an innocent man. 
That's the basis you're going to use. When we say we overcame by the blood of the lamb, a lamb there is significant for a spotless entity. He had no sin. He became sin for us. And that blood has the loudest voice. In fact, there's, you cannot go any further. It's like God saying he had to swear by himself because there was none greater than him. It has the strongest voice in the spirit. You do this by having the son, the blood of the son of God. So you're going to use the blood that was shed for the remission of sin. So that every sin in your family line that may be affecting you, that a familial spirit has been trailing you to ensure that you repeat that mistake. Oh, when you present the blood, the Bible says you can overcome. So, that's the next prayer point. I present the blood. I present the blood on behalf of not just myself, of my siblings, of my family. I present the blood. We repent and take the repentance this blood has afforded us. And so we present the blood of Jesus as the final answer to this scene. Let's begin to pray. Begin to unmute and begin to pray and ask God. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Bible says it speaks better things than the blood of Abraham. It speaks better things than the blood of Abraham. It speaks better things than the blood of Abraham. If only you knew the power in the blood. I present the blood. I present the blood. I present the blood. The blood of an innocent man was shed. The blood of God, the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross of Calvary. I present the blood. I present the blood as a substitution for me, O oh God. Every sin I in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. Revelation 12 11 also says something else that we overcome by the word of our testimony <laughs> How you can overcome the witness of blood against you is by the word of your testimony. What is your testimony exactly? Your testimony that you're going to present is that you are born again. Jesus said, except a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. And so because you are born of water and of the Spirit, you have entered the kingdom of God. Listen to me. Once you are in that kingdom, the devil's claims can no longer stand. It is your ignorance that is making it stand. You have been born of water. You have been born of the Spirit. You are a tongue-talking person. 
And for that reason, the witness of blood against you cannot stand. You must do what I'm saying with knowledge, confidence. Your testimony is that you are born again. You are born of water and of the spirit. And because of that, you have entered the kingdom. You are now a part of God's family, not of the family that you were born into. We are citizens of Zion. When God told Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your family, get thee out of your country unto a land I will show you. That land for you is the kingdom of God. And so we're going to pray. The Father, my testimony is that I am born of water. I am born of the Spirit. And so I have entered the kingdom of God. Every demon can no longer afflict me by virtue of my blood. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray on mute and begin to claim that exemption. That because I am born of the water and I am born of the spirit, and I am born of the water and I am born of the spirit, and I am born of the water and I am born of spirit, I am born of water and I am born of spirit, I am born of water and I am born of spirit, I am born of water, I am born of spirit, I am born of water. I am born of water. I am born of spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, I don't think you understand that last point. Let me explain it again. Oh, I wish we had a screen share. <laughs> Don't forget where we started out from. The Bible says in 1 John 5 verse 8 that there are three that bear witness in earth. The first is the spirit. The second is the water. The third is the blood. And it says these three agree as one. And now Jesus tells us in John John 3 verse 5, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus picked two out of these three because blood is so strong. You need the equivalence of the other two to outweigh blood. Do you understand what I'm telling, talking about today? Yeah, thank you, Victoria. Hmm. Give it to me, give me, so we've seen this, give me John 3 verse 5. Keep in mind what the what the scripture says in this first one that we've just read. There are three that bear witness. And the three that bear witness, it says that it is the spirit, it is the water, and it is the blood. But Jesus took out two. He took out two of that in John 3 verse 5. Because those two can outweigh the testimony of blood because you cannot change the blood in your veins it's already in your veins it's too late it's in your vein and that witness is so strong it can cry even when a person is dead your grandfather they may have covenanted you to water spirits the man may be long gone but the blood is still crying the only way you can overcome blood is the solution God gave here. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, 
no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit because once you enter that kingdom ooh, you're done that's it everything that's trailed you that trailed your father trailed your mother it would have to drop instantly the spirit and the water can neutralize the power in the blood so you have two solutions the first is that you can go by the blood of jesus which has a higher voice and we've already applied that then the second is you've done water baptism and you've done spirit baptism holy ghost baptism you speak in tongues when you have this knowledge i'm telling you what trailed your father what trailed your mother cannot hang on to you it should be neutralized but more importantly not just you you must do what i'm saying for your children because those kids i i, I they are innocent they have no idea what happened perhaps you have a sibling and that person is going through something you don't understand you have two options the first option is to use the witness of the blood of Jesus which has a stronger voice in the spirit the second option is to use the witness of water and of the spirit and both will outweigh blood you decide what you want to use we're going to pray You're going to tell God, I don't know what my father did. I don't know what my mother did. What their grandfather and their grandmother did. We're going to take specific prayers against sins, iniquities and transgressions first on the mother's side. And we're going to come with the water and the spirit. Because we are born of water and of the spirit. And by virtue of that, we have entered the kingdom. When we are done with that, we will go on the Father's side. David said, have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Listen to me. Your transgressions can be blotted out. So we're going to ask God to blot it out for you and for your children that are connected, that came from your lungs. Blot it out. Blot it out. Because I'm born of the water and I'm born of the spirit. Let's begin to pray and ask God, blot it out. Blot it out, blot everything out. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
in Jesus name we pray I see a vision I see angels they are carrying something that looks like a trumpet and they are blowing wind from one end and they are blowing out what looks like sand on the other end of the trumpet and the spirit of god says they are blotting out transgressions Amen. oh oh god oh my god oh my god the things that we are paying for that we don't even know we are paying for. blot out my transgressions I will take one last prayer point. Hmm. David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Wash me from my iniquities. So, iniquity is actually like a garment that you can wash with your hands. Cleanse me from my sin. That when sin is upon a person, they are in fact dirty. When you see them in the spirit, what you look like in the physical is not what you look like in the spirit. Many months ago, my wife and I were praying one particular day. We prayed 12 hours on that day. And this day I was feeling so sleepy. I had prayed for about five hours. And I said, let me take a nap. Instead of stopping when I stop, I will extend my prayer by the amount of time I slept. And I slept and I fell into a trance. And God showed me me in a mirror. I was naked. And I was, my, my, my body was being turned around in slow motion. In front of the mirror so I could see it. And all over my body there were bandages. Bandages, infirmities. And I heard a voice say, you are laden with infirmities. The only way man can get rid of these infirmities is by prayer. That's why we pray. So what you look like in the physical, you may be a beautiful woman, a handsome man. If God shows you you in the spirit, oh, in fact, let's pray that prayer point, that God show me me in the spirit. What do I look like in the spirit? So that I know how to address my issues. Would you show me me in the spirit? Let's take that quick prayer point. Show me me. Put a torchlight on me. 
Show me me in the spirit. Let's begin to pray. Show me me. Show me me. I want to see me. What do I look like? Show me me in the spirit. Show me what I look like. Show me me. Show me me. Show me me. What am I lacking? What am I doing right? What do I need to do? What have I done well? Show me me in the spirit. Man, Karabasi. Man, Karabasi.